Hi everyone, I'm Radosav and today I'm going to be presenting the solution or more or less a discussion about some different solutions to the challenge problem in this uh, November challenge. And yeah, here we can see a small slide about me. I have been doing competitive programming, programming for quite a while and now I'm studying in Oxford, computer science. So yeah, let's just go straight to the problem, I guess. So yeah, it's called Connect and Grid and there, are di there, there were different approaches to it. So I'm basically gonna discuss a couple of solutions that did pretty well, as I have been looking through some of the solutions of the participants. And yeah, I guess like as an outline of what th this small presentation is gonna be like. First, I'm gonna basically just explain what the problem statement is about. After that, it will be, there are like three solutions that were pretty common, I guess. I mean, at, at least there were at least a couple of people who did them and they performed like, in a way like nicely. Maybe they weren't the best solutions. Well, like the final one is currently the best solution and most of the people with the top scores actually did it. And yeah, pretty much that's it. This uh, video will probably be slightly shorter because you know, it's like a discussion about different solutions. So I'm not gonna go into a particular one very in depth, but yeah, I, I think as this is a challenge problem, it's kind of tricky to create a proper editorial. So the best choice in my opinion is to actually show different approaches that people actually took during the contest. And maybe this is in a way like the useful thing. So yeah, let, let's just go to the problem statement. So yeah. All right, we are basically given a grid with n rows and n columns. So it's like a square matrix. And also there are k checkpoints. And in a way you can think of the checkpoints as some special cells. And what you're trying to do is basically, you, you want to connect the, you actually want to join the checkpoints together. So in a way like you want to match the checkpoints so that a couple of constraints are satisfied. Oh yeah, also every checkpoint has these two integers. So every checkpoint has li and ri, which are used in the further constraints I'm gonna explain now. And yeah, we call a path in this table, just a sequence of cell cells such that every two adjacent cells share a side. Well, like, yeah, I mean like r1, c1, r2, c2, and so on is a path. If an, if and only if for every two adjacent points, we have that the cells are actually also one. I mean, if they're, if they just share a side. So yeah, like, like this way, every cell has like four neighbors. And yeah, also the other constraint is that the first and the last cell should be like the endpoints, which are the first and last cell should also be checkpoints. So yeah. Uh, the first constraint is that we want to have like paths and also the checkpoints can be only the endpoints of a path. So in a way, like you can't really have an, a checkpoint in the middle of some path. So in a way, like every path looks like the first cell is a checkpoint and there are some non, non checkpoint cells. And then the final cell is also a checkpoint. And that's like the first constraint. The second constraint is that all of the paths are disjoint which is pretty common in problems, which are in, in more like marathon problems or like challenge problems. And finally, for every path, you want the distance to be between, I mean, between the maximum of the L's and the minimum of the R's for the two checkpoints. So in a way, like if P and Q are uh, the checkpoints that are the endpoints of our path, we want the distance to be between the maximum of their their L's and the minimum of their R's, which actually represents the intersection. So in a way, like what L sh LR shows is the range of the ac accepting distances for a certain checkpoint. And yeah, like you basically just want the distance to be in the intersection of the two checkpoints. 
So yeah, well, like our goal is actually to find a set of paths such that its size is as large as possible. So in our rewards, we can basically just pair up the checkpoints and like finding some paths between them so that the paths actually satisfy the constraints I just mentioned. And we want to maximize the size of this. Well, like we just want to maximize the number of paths. So yeah, like looking at the constraints because that's quite important in this problem. We can see that n is actually relatively large and same actually for k, which you can actually, k is the number of checkpoints. So yeah, both of them can actually go to some pretty large numbers. However, you can notice that uh, both the, the left and the right are less than or equal to 64, which actually means that in the solution, all of the paths will be of length to less than 64, which is one of the constraints that quite a lot of participants exploited so that their solutions actually run fast enough. Because, in, yeah, I'm going to mention it when I get to this point, but yeah, it's it's a pretty useful constraint in this problem because else the whole, most of the approaches would have been relatively slow. But yeah, in general, uh, that's pretty much it. After that, there is a but basically like how the whole, how the tests were generated. And also this time we actually uh, decided to upload the test generation because this way, in a way it, it's a bit fair because there are some tests that you can see. And yeah, I mean, you can download the test generation plan. And yeah, if you're interested, you can read it, but basically it's I mean, it's just like normal generation so that every cell is in at least one path. But yeah, I mean, if you're interested, you can go for it. I'm not going to discuss it in this video editorial because yeah, if you're very interested about it, you can just read it. It's in the problem statement. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It's It had like the standard time limit for challenge problems. I mean, maybe not the standard one, but like quite a lot of problems challenge problems have five seconds as their time limit. And yeah, uh, I guess let's just go through some of the ideas that were implemented during the contest. And yeah, I hope you will enjoy and I'll try explaining most of them. At least like I'll explain three ideas, which are in a way like quite a lot of people use them. So yeah, okay. So the first idea is actually, I decided to just call it block splitting solutions. And in a way, the main idea is to, I mean, we have a large grid and we want to split. So, so like if we had enough time, we could have just brute forced all possible paths. Of course, that's like exponential, but yeah, I mean, if we had a small grid, this would have been feasible. And to actually try making the, I mean, to try getting like a solution for larger ends or like larger board sizes, what we can do is actually split our large board into some small board. We can notice that actually the brute force would have been exponential in the number of, I mean, we could have done an, a brute force, which is exponential in the number of uh, checkpoints and not in the number of cells, which is again, very slow because we already know that the number of checkpoints can go to k squared, uh, the number of checkpoints, which is k, can go to n squared. But fortunately, uh, we can try the following thing. Let's split the grid into square blocks such that the size of the blocks is approximately n over square root of k over two. So in this way, like the blocks will be relatively small and the expected number of checkpoints, if everything is generated randomly, in a block is around two. And this is actually pretty good because if you just find a path inside inside of every, I mean, like imagine that in every block now we'll have just two cells, so we can just pair them together and find a path. I mean, maybe it can happen that the path doesn't really work. So, okay, so maybe maybe I didn't explain this very very well, but like, imagine one of the blocks you just have two cells but their left values are very large. 
So in a way, like if you just find a path which stays in this block, maybe the distance won't be enough to actually satisfy it. But still, I mean, if you just try pairing up two cells in a block and without going outside of your block, you can actually get a decent solution. I, I think it, okay, that's not really decent, but it was getting around 40 points or 30 points in the contest, which wasn't that bad, but yeah, you can actually optimize the solution a bit by actually, I mean, you have some blocks. You, one way to do to go around the solution is to basically try matching the cells inside of the same block. Like, like I mean, you have a block and you basically one way to go around it is what I just mentioned, actually, to just try matching the two checkpoints inside of the same block. I'm saying two because on average it will be two. Maybe it will be actually larger, but yeah, let, let's just say for now that it will be two because if it's larger, we can just have an if. If it's larger than some constant, just ignore some of the checkpoints. And okay, so that, that's one way to go around it. However, we can notice that maybe it will be better to actually, instead of just looking at our current block, we can actually try looking at adjacent blocks. And why is this good? Because like, I mean, we on average, we just have two blocks in every, I mean, basically like in every block, we just have two, two checkpoints. And I mean, even if we just consider two blocks, which are adjacent and try matching, like just by brute force, try matching every possible path, that's just four checkpoints. And this will actually be pretty, pretty fast. And what we can do is like a DP like merging where we just, we can either have every block alone or we can just consider two adjacent blocks and like try merging them together. And yeah, this way, well, like you have a recurrence relation for every row of blocks. And yeah, this way you basically get a solution which is definitely better than always just having a block being alone. And in a way, why is this, like, why are we trying to do the, the, the whole thing? It's mainly because we can't really brute force everything. So we, we try reducing our search space to this small thing with like small blocks. And in this small search space, the chances that we are actually gonna, I mean, it's definitely, the, uh, like basically we just reduce the search space and then try using dynamic programming to just like try grouping the things. And yeah, like this simple solution was actually getting around 1.35 points for the score. And at the time I'm actually recording this video, this was around 60 points. And it's actually possible to extend the solution to look at more cells, uh, not more cells, but more blocks. So in other words, like right now we are just looking at this one and the previous one, and maybe we can actually look at three consecutive blocks and try doing all possible matchings, then look at two consecutive blocks and so on. In, in a way like DP of I will be, uh, will depend on the previous three DPs. But we have to notice that uh, if the number of, so, so I mean like with every, other block we add to the left in a way like the complexity grows at least twice. And I mean, even if you have three blocks, this will be like, like around eight points and brute forcing all of them is actually kind of slow now because we have to do this a lot of times. And yeah, I mean, I think the best choice was just two, but this was like one solution and it was getting like around 60 problem, 60 points. And yeah, also, like I noticed one solution which also had some block-based idea, but I didn't get the com complete idea because, yeah, I mean, normally when you have a marathon problem or a challenge problem, you don't really go into all of the details. But yeah, it was, again, something based on blocks and it was getting around 1.7 or at this time it was 80 points. <clears throat> or at this time it was 80 points, which was pretty good. So yeah, this was overall the first solution, which is like with block splitting. And now I'm gonna continue to the, the second solution, which was 
used by a couple of people. Maybe I think it was just two, but still. So yeah, I mean, like this second solution actually used matching and to be more precise, matching in general graphs, maybe because there was another problem in the contest, which is the select edge problem, which required, I mean, not, not really required, but there was a solution with uh, maximal matching in general graphs. So maybe some people just decided, oh yeah, I already have this implemented, so maybe I can use it here. And surprisingly, you could use it. So the main idea was to run a procedure a couple of times. I'd like, when you actually solve a challenge or marathon problem, there are a lot of approaches which are simply you try, you try doing some solution while you have time. And like, for example, you can just generate some random candidate, find the score for it. And if it's better than the previously best one, you just keep it. And you do this again and again and again. And when you run out of time, you just print the answer. And like, we're going to do something similar here. And the idea is to do the following. For every checkpoint, we can run a breadth for search or a DFS on the extended graph of vertices and length. So in other words, like uh, for every checkpoint, we can see for all other checkpoints and all other distances, whether we can reach uh, that this other checkpoint at a certain distance. And I mean, like basically, we can state it in another way for every two checkpoints and some distance D, we can check whether we can reach the first one until the second one on distance D. And like, if there is some D between left and right for like those two checkpoints, then we are sure that the max, so, so yeah, like if that's the case, we can, let's just add an edge to our, uh, Let's just add an edge to some other graph, which will just contain the checkpoints as the vertices. So now it's like, let, let's just create some graph G prime, which will only have the checkpoints as the vertices. And like, if we can reach one checkpoint from the other one by not, uh, by always just following the constraint for, uh, by, uh, by following the constraint for not going through other checkpoints and also the constraint for left and right. Well, like these two constraints are easily checkable if we just find some path at distance D. Then we'll add an edge in our graph G, G prime. And now what we are going to do is we are going to find the maximal matching in this graph G prime. Well, like it's just a normal graph. So, so like we have maximal matching in a general graph. So yeah, we run this algorithm for G prime. And what, what we'll actually get here is in a way is a list of matches, but what we actually aren't sure is whether this list of matches satisfies that the paths between them are disjoint. But fortunately we can actually just do something very stupid. We can just greedily consider random orderings and see whether some of the orderings satisfies Basically the, I mean, uh, in a way what we just, what we can just check is we have this ordering of the matches and we just go through them in order. And like, you see the first one, you check whether the current, currently suggested path that matches the current two checkpoints actually intersects with something from before. If it does, then we just discard this match. If it doesn't, we just go for this path and fill it. And yeah, if we just consider random orderings of that, and like, if for example, I mean, yeah, like, like, like let's just consider some constant number of random orderings and we are just gonna keep the best result. And yeah, if after that step, we still have time, we are gonna find another maximal matching in this general graph, because in general, you can actually find like different matchings if you just random shuffle the order of the edges in the general matching in like in the general matching if you just random shuffle the order of the edges before running the algorithm you can actually get another matching and yeah that's what we are basically going to do 
we find the matching, then we consider some random orderings, and then we just have this as a candidate for our answer. <clears throat> so yeah, basically that's the main idea of this solution. And most of the solutions, uh, there were like at least two solutions and both of them were around 1.8 point, well, like had a score of around 1.8, which was around 82 or 83 points when I was actually, or like at the time of me recording this video. Okay, and I guess like after that, I mean, this idea is I didn't really like it, but mostly because you actually have to implement something pretty hard for it. But still, it's, I mean, I mainly didn't like it because you have to implement something harder, but it's also not a bad idea. It's pretty fun because, yeah, it's like one of the most generic ways, in one of the most generic approaches on. I mean, like, like, it's just something that you would expect to be a solution for a challenge problem. And it actually did pretty well compared to some other solutions. And yeah, I think if you did something like that, you were in the first five people based on score. And yeah, it was a pretty good solution. Okay, so I guess after that, we have the DFS solution, which is actually... I mean, I was pretty surprised that this solution worked that well. But I mean, yeah, let's just go straight to it. So let's just have some heuristic for sorting the checkpoints. One, one, one heuristic would be to just sort it lexicographically by x, y. So yeah, you first sort by x. If the x's are the same, you just sort by y. Also, we can use some other interesting color, like literally the top four solutions are pretty much the same idea, but like with different heuristics. And like another heuristic would be like one of the heuristics I saw was to actually sort by right and then by, and then lexicographically by x, y, but it was doing worse than just sorting by x, y. So yeah, I mean, they're different approaches. And now like we have sorted the checkpoints and our approach would be something like we are first going to find the best match for first we are going to find some match for the first checkpoint in our order then we are going to go to the second one and we have already covered some path from the first checkpoint now that we are at the second checkpoint we are going to find some other path and so on and so on so in other words like our approach would simply be we are at some checkpoint we find some, I mean, we'll, we are we are going to find the match for the current checkpoint, and then we are just going to cover this path, the path between, between them. And yeah, like, you know, in, in some words, it's just a sequential approach where we just like find the paths one by one. And yeah, like, basically the DFS idea was to just run a brute force DFS, like, like you literally just go for all possible paths and find basically the reachable checkpoints that satisfy the left-right constraint. And I mean, like, in a way you would have a DFS with the parameters being the current point, I mean, the current cell in the table, then the distance, as you know that the distance is less than or equal to 64. And yeah, you literally just go through all of the, I mean, you just run the whole thing and this will give you some candidates for the final checkpoints or, or like the, not the final checkpoints, but like for the match. I mean, you, you literally just reach some checkpoints that satisfy the left, right constraints. And that also satisfy all of the other constraints about the past being disjoint and etc. And yeah, like we'll call this checkpoints candidates. And now the only question that we have is, how would we actually choose the best candidate? And I mean, the currently best solution also, I, th I think it really makes sense, defines uh, something that's called the degree. And it's, you know, it, in a way it represents the... So yeah, imagine you have... Let, let me just start over. So, so yeah, let's just define degree of some point 
of some checkpoint as the number of other checkpoints that satisfy the left-right constraint if we just use the Manhattan distance. So in other words, the degree for some cell is just the number of checkpoints that are relatively close to it. And also, like I said relatively close because we know that a right is actually bounded by 64. So in other words, like we are only interested in the cells that are on the distance at most 64, but like at most R, but yeah, it's like more or less, more or less 64 in the worst case. Same, I mean like we can calculate the degree and in a way, try thinking what the degree represents. It's basically like the number of points that are, if, if you just didn't care about any of the disjoint paths constraints and so on, and you only care about left and right, then, and also like you just considered Manhattan distance, then basically what the degree represents would be how easy it is to actually match a checkpoint. Because like if the degree is very large for some certain checkpoint, then there are some other checkpoints, like if the degree is large, then there are a lot of checkpoints that actually can be matched with the current one. While if the degree is actually very low, then it's kind of hard to actually find the match because we don't have a lot of matches. And yeah, like based on this degree and the distance to the point, we can actually have some score function, which would be like f of distance and degree, by which we are gonna actually compare the candidates. And I mean, some of the best solution, right now I'm pretty sure the best solution uses it. Although after I record it, maybe there'll be some change in the rankings. But yeah, in a way like this f will represent, f can be some function which you can think of and you can kind of decide where you want to have like longer paths or shorter paths. And that's why you can, you actually include the distance in the f, which will be the score function. And the degree is basically like how hard is it to match something. And like in a way, what you would want to do is when you are matching right now something, you would actually want to match it with something that will be hard to match afterwards. So something with a low degree. And yeah, basically that's pretty much the idea. And there is like a small problem with it. The thing is that actually, because the DFS can go to depth 64 and we can actually reach all cells on depth 64, you can think of it like as a small rectangle, which has, which is like 128 by 128, which is quite a lot. It's, it's like 16,000 and you can actually consider this rectangle for every possible checkpoint. And you can have like around n squared checkpoints. So yeah, that's the DFS, DFS tree can actually go very large. And that's why in a way you, you want to, the, the things that you actually want to like just prune some branches and there are like different ways to do it. There, there was some approach that's actually used beam search, but yeah, the, currently like the second best one, for example, uses just with probability 1%, just kill the current branch and this runs in time. And like you, you can, just because like the DFS3 can actually go quite large, you have to think about how to prune it. And yeah, that, that's not something so interesting. I mean, like there are different approaches and even some randomized ones will probably be fine. But yeah, that, that's pretty much it. That, that's like the only main problem. And now what about the score? Surprisingly, this solution was actually getting, like all of the people who actually implemented it were getting more than two as a score, which was pretty good compared to the previous 1.8 I mentioned for like the matching solution. And at the time of my re me recording this, the best score is around 2.4. I mean, it's something like 2.38, but yeah, it's around 2.4. And yeah, that, that was pretty much it from the solutions. I tried basically as in a way for challenge problems, you can't really explain the correct solution because it's an NP half round. So, but like the best thing to do in my opinion is to actually go through the solutions of the different participants and to actually see what they did. And I tried my best to do that, 
maybe I missed some of the solutions for which I apologize, but I think I went for most of them and yeah, that's what I saw. So I decided to not explain the ideas which got low scores at the, me, at the time of me recording it. By low, I mean less than 30 points because they're either something that's just a greedy or they were, they were just parts of the solutions I explained now. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'm gonna be answering them like after the contest stands, but you're also gonna be watching this after the contest stands. So yeah, thanks again. And I guess see you next time.